Well, good morning, my friend. We are back today. Oh, actually, first I should say, you have reached Needlebug. My name is Karen, and today we're going to work on block number three of the Hardanger Stitch Along. So, welcome back. If you are returning and participating in the Stitch Along, thank you so, so much for being here today. And if you are new and have just found this, thanks for stopping by. If you want to see the videos for block one and two, you can go back. They are in a Hardanger Stitch Along playlist. So welcome. Welcome to everybody. And so glad you're joining me today. So we are doing block three. I'm going to try not to shake a whole lot here and move around. My camera does tend to, if the table moves, get a little jittery. So please excuse that. But we're going to try the best we can to get you started on this stitch along. So block number three, I'm going to show you real quick. Looks like, hold on, looks like this. Okay, so I have found for me, the easiest thing to do is because you really need to have this centered and you don't want to miscount. So I have found for myself to start with the eyelet in the center of the block. Now, I will tell you for various reasons, this is time number three, in recording this video. So I'm not going to be doing it on my piece because I have already done it on my piece. So I'm going to record this using a, a working, how can I say it? Um, a test piece of fabric. So, but it will get you the same thing. So the first thing you want to do to make sure that it's centered is what I did. And I'm going to move this down a little bit. I found the center of my block. So the easiest way is we know that each block is 18 four sided stitches wide and 18 four sided stitches long. So I counted in nine four sided stitches and then ran a basting thread to the center. Okay. And then I did the same thing on the side. I ran a basting thread from the, the join of the ninth and the 10th. There would be a 10 here. I just didn't stitch that one. Um, four-sided stitch and ran that horizontally. So that is going to tell me that my center stitch is right here. Okay. So where those lines cross, obviously, is your center stitch. And I'm sure you guys are, have been stitching long enough that you know how to find the center of things. So with that, what we are going to do is we are going to start with this eyelet in the center. Okay, now you're thinking, but where am I going to anchor my thread? Well, I watched a video by Yvette Stanton, who shows you how to do an eyelet that is an isolated eyelet in a land all of its own. <laughs> And thank you, Yvette, for doing that. I appreciate it so, so very much. So if you're watching this, um, I just wanted to say thanks for demonstrating that eyelet because it certainly is very helpful in this sampler. And we really appreciate your uh, wealth of knowledge. So hopefully I will be able to duplicate this <laughs> the same way. Um, We'll see how it goes. I have done a couple to practice, so hopefully I'm good. 
So I know that this is my center stitch. Okay, I'd like to do this just to make it a little, well, my thread is actually going down in the center, so that will be a little easier. I'm going to start with an away thread. I'm going to pull that, or I'm going to insert that to my left and down a little bit from my starting point. We know this is the center. So from the center, since this is over four by four, I'm going to count over two and up two to get my corner of my eyelet. to leave a bit of a tail, okay? Because what we're going to do is when we first do this first leg of the eyelet, or the this first side, I should say, of the eyelet, we're going to catch this away thread. So I'm going to stick my needle to go down in the center. However, so that I don't get them caught, I am now going to pull these basting threads because I know where my center is and I'm going to pull my basting threads so that I don't get them caught in the eyelet. Now this thread I do want to catch. So we're going to start in the corner. We're going to go down in the center. We're going to come up one thread over and we're going to pull away from the center. Down in the center again, up one thread over, and pull away from the center. This is three to four, pull. And this is my, will be my next corner stitch. And again, we're going to pull. helps when your fabric stays really tight and I guess I didn't uh, tighten this enough. Okay, so here we go. We'll try that. Okay, now we're going to come down this side. So we're going to go again down in the center, up one thread, down, and pull. Now, yeah, you don't have to pull terribly hard, but you need to pull hard enough that it opens up this hole. Um, again, you want, that's the purpose of an eyelet, is to make a hole in your fabric. So you want to, you know, you want to give it a nice tug so that you get a nice hole. I mean, if you're not going to get a big hole, like, why bother <laughs> to coin a phrase from Yvette? The purpose is to make the hole. So make the hole. <laughs> this is three. And this stitch will go in the corner. Okay. Now, when you have three stitches left, so it would be one, I'm not going to pull that one yet. Come up here. Okay, so now I have three stitches left. One, two, and in the corner. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down in the center and I'm going to leave a loop. Okay. I'm going to come up where I normally would, but I'm not going to pull this tight. I'm leaving 
a loop. I'm going down in the center. Again, leaving a loop and coming up between the next thread. Going down in the center. And again, whoops, see that? I almost forgot myself. There, leave a loop and come up in your corner. Now, making sure that these three loops are in the correct order, and that's been my thing. <laughs> All right, so you want them all to lay in the order that you stitched them. Because if they're not, then it doesn't quite pull right, okay? So there you go. There we go. You want them all to lay side by side, and then you wanna let your needle there and then you want to pull them tight okay just like that so that you have a needle and your three loops are now tight on your needle okay are you all with me that's a little tricky to make sure that a they're not twisted and b they're laying in the correct order so that they aren't overlapping on each other now, and then you pull them so that they all are resting on your needle. Now, you're going to pull your needle through. You have two thread, your tail and your working thread. So you pull your needle through that your tail and your working thread are underneath the three loops and you pull. Now, you pull it through again until just your tail is through the three loops and you just have your working thread and you pull again, tighten it up again. And then once you've done that, you pull it all the way through and tighten it up again. That's your eyelid. Now, it's it's anchored underneath those three loops that you left so now you can trim it off as close as you can without cutting your stitches and i probably could have cut that just a little bit closer but like i said this is a sample so and as you see you have no threads on the top and if you turn it over, this thread that which which is your away thread is caught under your stitches also. So you can now trim that off. And you have one isolated eyelet stitch. I think I could have got that just a smidgen closer. if I had it here what I would do is take my snag nabbit and try and pull that underneath a little bit but you get the idea when you cut this the easiest way to cut is to take that thread and pull up on it and then get your scissors down there as close as you can so that you can um let me show you here's a here's a thread if you pull up on it and you get then as close as you can, it will pop back down. So I just didn't pull up hard enough on that, on that eyelet and yeah, my mistake. So I'm gonna try and wiggle that a little bit. Actually, what I'm gonna try and do is pull it back this way a little bit. Maybe work it. Yeah, I 
it's a little better. So I'm, I'm kind of pulling on my corner stitch to scooch it back underneath those threads. Okay, so that's your eyelet, all right? You might want to rewatch this section a couple times till you get the hang of how to do that. But it's your last three stitches. You leave big loops. You make sure that they're not twisted and they're laying in the correct order. You put your needle through them and then you pull them tight on to your needle. That's the trick onto your needle and then you pull your needle through when it's the thread and the tail you pull it tight when it's just your working thread you pull it tight again and then you pull it all the way through trim it off okay and again thank you Yvette for showing us how to do this I really really enjoyed that video so I do, when I learn something new, want to give credit to folks that I learned it from. Okay, so with that, we're going to move on to placing the ships. Now, I am just going to do one corner of this um, of this block with you. In fact, it might not be the whole corner, but I will get you at least started on the corner. All right. All right, let me get some. You want to switch to your larger pearl cotton at this point. And we're going to do this here. So I'm going to work this again from the center out because that's the least counting that I have to do at this moment in time. And again, I want to make sure things are going to be centered. So I'm going to use my away thread. And then I'm going to count up to and over two stitches or threads from the corner of that eyelet, okay? And then if you, um, if you count on the diagonal, you should come to the corner of the eyelet, which is exactly what happens. So now I'm gonna work this part. All right, so your first stitch is over two. Your next stitch is over three. Now remember how I like how I do this is I know that there are seven stitches up this side where I'm keeping it straight on this side, but this side is on an angle. So now we're at two. And this, so that's two. This is three. This is four. And all the time you're catching this thread. This is five. Six. That's seven. And now, since we have seven, I'm going to pull this thread to the back, get it out of my way. I'm going to angle straight up on this side, and this side is going to angle. So I count backwards. So that's seven. This is six.
five. Four. Three. Two. And now I am doing the first one of, let's see how many is it? One, two, three, four, five stitches that are over two threads. So that's one. This is two. Three, this is four, this is five. Now we're going to want to do three stitches that angle up this way. Okay, so that's, that's five. And you may have to untwist your thread once in a while. So this is one. This is two. is three. Now the next stitch goes over four threads. So you're going to come up here and you're going to count over four. One, two, three, and four. You're going to come up one thread in. You're going to count over. That's a little tight there. Loosen that up. going to count over two and then you're going to come up basically about right underneath that okay and you are going to go over two Gonna come up even. You're gonna go over three. Come up even. You're gonna go over three again. You're gonna drop in one thread. Okay. I'm down one too many threads. Hold on here. I'm not good with my left hand. <laughs> here. Okay. And then this one is over four. And your last stitch is in here. So coming up here. And you're going over two. So that is half of your ship. You would complete the other half here. Okay. Now, I would cut. Actually, I don't think you have to really. You can travel this to your cluster block 
because that's going to be right here. So you would be having this thread carry right in here anyway. And instead of going all the way down here to the bottom, well, that's what I'm going to do. You would complete the other half and then you could do this because like I said, you're going to be right here for these four blocks. So I'm going to place those and I'm going to do those again as a marker for when we do the half over here. Okay, so This is up, it's easier to count in from the top. One, two, three. This is even with the third one. One, two, three. Okay. So I've counted in three of these over twos. One, two, three. And because of the direction I like to stitch, I counted out four because remember, cluster blocks are what? Five stitches over four fabric threads. Okay? So, one. And again, I do them in this direction because normally I would sew. Four, five. Now remember, we don't want to come down here like this. We don't want to do that. Do you remember why? Because it would give you a long thread on the diagonally across these four threads and what if you had to cut you would cut there so we're going to come up in a shared hole one two three four that should line up with stitch number seven which will also line up when you do this half of so again, we're going to do five, one, two, three, four, and five. Again, share the hole. Four, three, three, four, and five. One more time for the fourth side. there's your block in that uh, will join to this ship that's going to go here. This eventually in the center here will get cut. That's going to be your open work. If I remember right, there's a dub side that goes in there. Okay. So now I will show you how to start the ship from this side. But we know we're going to be in the middle. So we're good there. We know that this ship here is going to 
but up against this cluster block. So if it doesn't, you know you have a problem somewhere. <clears throat> okay, so you would end this thread off. Okay, so you would lock it, do the locking stitch. I'll review that with you also. Okay, so the way I lock, the way I end my thread is you're here, so you want to continue in the direction of your travel. Okay, so you don't want to go back into this block because that's going to pull that hole in the wrong direction. So you want to go under this block. Now, since I only have four here, I'm going to go over the first thread under the rest of the block again. And now again, I'm going to go over the first thread under the block again. And I'm going to go under this one and under this one. And then I'm going to trim it off. So this will not come undone. <clears throat> I've used this method for many years and it will not come undone. I don't know that I can get off of this thing out of that. So let's start a new piece of thread. All right, so now we're going to place this one. Okay. okay. I have to orient myself as to which direction I want to stitch. <laughs> okay, so if. holding it wrong. No wonder it looks funky monkey here. All right. So when you look at your chart, you know <clears throat> that this stitch will start at the halfway point of that four-sided stitch. And if you count your threads between the four-sided stitch and the first stitch of the ship, you will go in eight threads. In other words, you will go in to this join here. Okay. So you will go from the halfway point of this one to the join of this one. So that even eliminates some counting as long as you can line them up correctly. So I'm going to let my tail right there for now. And then I'm going to come in to here. Okay. So do you see where this tail? matches where my needle is coming up. I'm on the same thread. Okay. So that's a way that you really don't have to, I mean, I would count my threads just to double check. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Six threads would be one four-sided four stitch and a half of a four-sided stitch. And then if you count from here to here, you should have eight because it's two four-sided stitches. Okay. So with that, all right, I want to see, I have a, a marker there, kind of there's a hole. So I want 
to put my away thread up here so that I can stitch over it. All right, so here, and I'm even with the halfway point here. So I'm going to have my tail to stitch over, and this side is going to be straight. This side is going to angle, right? So I'm going to do, whoops, I'm going to go this way. One. As I said, normally I sew, so I'm working at a different angle than I normally would when I do a sewing method. I don't usually um, stick and stab my my stitches okay so that's two here comes three i'm trying to keep my hands out of the way Four. Five. Six. Pull that to the back so I can see. Now, number seven should be on the same line as your cluster block, which, if you look over, it is. Okay, so we're going to go seven. We're going to come in one. This is six. In one. This is five. Four. Now we're going to share holes. Three, two, and one. So that's one of five. One, two. Three, four, and five. Okay, now you're going to do your three at the angle. All right, so here's. One, two, and three, and your next one is four, so you're going to go one, two, three threads away, and then when you come down, you'll come down here, so that will be four. in one on both sides so that you're covering two and then you're going to go out one and over two 
even and over three even over three even over four and we can go into over two and then you're gonna go back down here to the bottom and do the other half so that is half of your corner okay so with this you should be able to put the other side on both of these ships and then work your other your other three corners in the same manner so there we have block number three. Oh my God, I had to stop and think. Okay. So again, if you have questions, just send me a message, leave a comment, whatever works the best for you. Um, and I don't know if I'll get to block number four next week. Um, things, I have some things that I need to do next week. So, uh, it might be two weeks till we do block number four. So with that, my friends, thank you for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Um, I'm not sure what the weather is going to be like here for our weekend, but we shall see. So until next time. Have a great day, a great rest of your week, and thank you so, so much for joining me today.